Okay, so bubble sort is the name given to the procedure that sorts elements in, an, in a one-dimensional array in a ascending or descending order. But in our syllabus, it's only concerned with the ascending part, so that's all we look at. The reference here is 10.2. So first we'll explore how what bubble sort is, and then we'll look at a couple past paper questions. Okay, sorting elements in a one dimensional array. The simplest way to sort in an unordered list of values is the following method. Compare the first and second values. If the first value is larger than the second value, swap them. Compare the second and third values. If the second value is larger than the third value, swap them. And on and on and on it goes. Basically, it, like it says here, compare adjacent values. That means those next to each other. until the array is all sorted like this. So these swaps are basically called passes. So these are the states of the array after each pass. So after pass six, it's all sorted. Now this array had seven elements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for seven elements, you'll notice we only needed six passes and that's the maximum because six and uh, basically the maximum number of passes is one less from the boundary value of the number of the elements in the array so and it could be less if the array was already partially sorted okay moving on so now let's look at the actual code so here are the list of identifiers that they're using this is the array and this is the max index so the upper bound of the array and this is the integer they're using for the boundary and is the counter for the inner loop outer loop and the counter for inner loop and temp is always the variable for temporary storage for swapping values so basically here's how it goes at the start we set a boundary value usually in mark schemes they use the word boundary for this variable but here you have used n because n is simpler and for i 0 to max index minus 1 so basically this value and this is the number of passes so one less than the upper bound of the array and then we continue with the inner loop which is for uh, the code for a single pass so it basically checks if it is uh, if the value is greater, the adjacent value is greater, and if it is, then it goes ahead and swaps it. And the one other thing at the end is this n equals to n minus one. So this is because uh, the, each time we go through this loop, we sort one element, and that means that we need to look at less elements one less element each time uh, next time okay uh, the code above was very inefficient and it was for two reasons that it was inefficient the first one is that the code uh, this sorry the array may already be partially sorted so you will not need six passes so like here it says after the third pass all uh, the values are in the correct order but our algorithm will carry on with three further passes which are not required and one other thing is that if we've gone through the whole of the inner loop or one pass without swapping any values we know that the array uh, must already be sorted so we can basically stop then so we'll try to rectify these and improve the code so we set our boundary value as before and this time we use repeat loop instead of for loop because we'll just check at the end if we've swapped or not and if we have swapped, uh, then it will continue. And if we haven't swapped, then it will stop. So here they've used no more swaps. So they do opposite of what I said. Basically, they set it to true at the start. And if it's still true at the end, that means there have been no swaps. So they can stop then. But it will be false if it has been swapped. So you just put this condition. Sorry. Just assign this, this value if this block of code gets edit, executed. That's like the only change that uh, they made here and everything else is the same. Now we'll move on to questions.
In this question, it's asking us to write a procedure bubble sort for a 1D array contact that has, it's basically string because it's using name, but it's also given in the question that it's string. And it's also given that the elements are 1000. So the boundary will be 999. So basically, the first thing we should do is write procedure bubble sort and end procedure because this carries one mark, I think. And then we'll declare the variables. The first one is stamp, which is used for swapping. The second one is the boolean flag variable. And then the next two are integers. The boundary, you already know, it, uh, is basically the max number of passes. And j is the counter, no, sorry, the index that we use for the array. Okay, so this is where the code starts. And we set the boundary to 999 because I said there are a thousand elements. So the max swaps we'll need, uh, sorry, the max passes will be 999. And then we basically start the outer loop. So repeat, and we set no swaps to true. And we go, for, we start with the inner loop then, which is the loop for, which is the code for one pass or a single pass. So for J, which I said we'd be using for indexing, one to boundary. So this, and then it basically checks if the adjacent value is greater, uh, sorry, if the adjacent element is greater. And if it is greater, then it executes this block of code. And if this block of code is executed, then notice, oh, sorry, notice that this also happens. And if this happens, then the loop here continues. And one other thing is that boundary is decremented after the inner loop executes. And that's because if each time this inner loop executes, we uh, basically will need one less we need to process one less element the next time. So there is another part to this question. It was this, the efficient part. So why was that efficient? So it was efficient for two reasons. First is that it reduces the number of items to be checked after each pass. So boundary decrement. Oops. So basically this. And the second one is that it uses a flag variable to stop the outer loop when there are no more swaps in the single pass of inner loop. And it also is set whenever a swap is made. So basically this, it's talking about this, the purpose of the swap uh, variable, sorry, the Boolean flag variable. So basically that was it for this question and we'll do another one. So question two. So this one's more of a fill in the blanks type of question. And they've combined it with the string operations. So basically, uh, when, the, uh, when the array directory of type string is used to store a list of school and telephone numbers and there are a thousand elements. And basically explain how they're stored. And this following pseudocode is an initial attempt at defining a procedure sort contacts that will perform a bubble sort in directory and the error will be sorted in ascending order fill in the gaps to complete the pseudocode okay so firstly they're asking for the type of the variable no swaps and we know that is boolean because no swaps is a flag variable so it can only be true or false and that's what boolean is Okay, and the boundary, it said that there are a thousand elements, so that means the boundary will be 999. And now it's basically uh, using the string operations, so we have to extract, I believe, the name part, and that's done from the right. Because number is a four digit numeric string and name is variable length. So we'll just use this to extract the name part. And then we put it in insert second name and basically compare them. And then this block of code is executed if it is greater. 
and this is basically the next element so it will be j plus one and then if or if this block of code is being executed then no swap will always be false and at the end it's basically decrementing boundary same as last time okay the pseudocode contains a mechanism designed to make this an efficient bubble sort describe the mechanism and explain why it may be considered efficient so lots of emphasis on this word efficient and it's efficient because it's using the repeat loop instead of for and it has the <coughs> no swaps variable okay so it decreases loop size at the end of inner loop so same point as last time and it uses a flag variable also same point uh, as last time and basically explain them that it's a reset for the inner loop starts and set it's set whenever the swap is made and this prevents unnecessary iterations or passes so this was question on to question three and you'll notice that this code is like very similar to what we wrote in the other question and basically this time uh, the array is of type string and there are 100 elements so first we'll write procedure and end procedure and we'll declare but this time we'll have to declare these two too as well and basically the rest of it is the same boundary 99 because it's, it has 100 elements this time so one less then we set no swaps and then we start the inner code and this time we use these variables so I guess there is one small difference but it's mostly the same and if you're having trouble remembering this then just write this and the other answers on the piece of paper and if you do that it's basically embedded in your head and once you see the question like this you know where to go start and if you're still confused then then you should like just write the example code of what you have it's very roughly on the paper and you can go from there okay anyway so again if first id is greater than second id then this block of code is executed temp is uh, sorry temp is assigned username eric j and then it's swap and then no swaps is set to false and if and for boundary decremented until no swaps is true and then end procedure question four and this one's slightly different because uh, since they can't just basically ask us to make a procedure bubble sort because that certain code will never change so that would be way too simple so they just try to twist these questions and in this one they've asked us to identify the errors so here's the code and you have to identify the errors and with the line numbers and it the data type is string and there are 100 elements so boundary will be 99 and again data type will be string okay so the first one they've given us and it is that they've used the wrong name so in the question the name of the algorithm was supposed to be this but they've written it the other way around solitary so this is technically wrong and this has been pointed out now line number two in line number two they've the, the written the wrong data type since it's a uh, array of string it must the temp must also be string line number three the variables have been undefined so these two are fine they've been defined but i and j haven't and they've used that here here, and here, here. now line number four what's wrong with line number four there's the wrong value so instead of uh, uh, wrong value of 100, basically it has to be 199 or the boundary value. So they've done that wrong. Because again, you don't need 100 passes. The maximum number of passes you will need are 99 if the array has 100 elements. Okay, and then line number five, wrong range. 2 to 99 is wrong and 1 to 99 is correct line number 5 sorry that was line number 5 and line number 6 it should be string to num not modulus because first we have to convert string to num and then compare them and also since product id is 4 character string this should be 4 
it should be four. Because we have to ex extract just the variable string. And this is a string of numerals. We don't need numerals because we can't compare uh, numerals. Okay, line number six and seven. Wrong function, as I already pointed out. And there's wrong value of six as well. And it should be string to num the function. And this should be first id left product j comma four. Line number ten is okay. Temp is assigned the wrong value. It's assigned j. Uh, oh, sorry. It's assigned i instead of j. And product is assigned the wrong value as well. So assigned i because we're using j for index not i okay then these two have been reversed and for end and if it's been reversed first and if and then it's and for so this if was never terminated according to this code and hmm, i think that's it yeah so that was it uh, i've covered four questions i think it's uh, really deep uh, it's good enough and if you still have any problems, you can, uh, what I would suggest is just, just write these on a piece, piece of paper, like separately. And if you do that a few times, then it will be embedded in your head. And then you will not forget it ever.